Good evening and welcome. Good evening and welcome to this evening's Landoc Live. Just had a few technical difficulties setting up, so hopefully you're all with me now. And thank you so much for joining me this evening. It's been a couple of months since I last held one of these. Obviously, when we were in the middle of lockdown, I was holding them quite frequently once every week or once every couple of weeks. But that was when there was a lot of new information coming out and I thought it was a good way of getting that to you quickly. I'm keeping these going now because I did think they were initially quite successful and did provide all of us with a good way of engaging and chatting about important issues in Landoc and the community. But I have decided to reduce the frequency slightly, one, so that um, you don't get bored of them, and secondly, so that I don't run out of things to say either. But as I said, it's been a while, so it's good to be back. And thank you to everyone who has taken part so far, if that's either asking a question, watching them live or watching them back, because without you guys, they wouldn't have worked. And I'm extremely grateful to all of you for engaging so positively with it. There are a number of issues that have cropped up in recent weeks, so I have decided to break this down into a couple of segments. The first one will focus on the Bail Sports Arena planning application that has gone in. I know a lot of you have some questions about that one, so hopefully I'll be able to answer those. Secondly, we'll then go on to talk about the parking issues, speeding and other highways related matters. The residents only parking scheme that has been proposed, I think is a step in the right direction. There have been a lot of questions on that as well, so I will hopefully be able to answer some of those, or all of those I should say, as we go through. And then the final part will be on other announcements and issues I've got, and take any other questions from the residents that you may have. So hopefully that explains how we're going to structure things this evening, but I suggest the best thing we can do now is to make a start. So as I said, we will begin with Vail Sports Arena, and I'll start with our first question, which came in from Tracy Scott. So good evening, Tracy. Um, thank you for sending the question in this evening. Um, basically, probably a good idea for me, actually, to set out some details around the application before I go on to Tracy's question. Therefore, any of you who aren't aware exactly of what's been proposed or requested will have that background information and then Tracy's question will hopefully make a bit more sense for you as well. So the application is to vary the existing planning conditions on the site. It's had these planning permissions for some time but they are looking to, um, inc to make, to give them greater um, permissions to be able to hold certain events on the site. The first one is at the moment they have permission to hold events for a capacity up to 400 people three times a week. Obviously not at the moment right now with lockdown or um, not lockdown, social distancing measures in place. The COVID restrictions have have obviously, obviously put a stop to those temporarily, but they want that permission increased from 400 up to 1200 capacity three times a week. So there have been questions about that. Secondly, they'd like to be able to hold events for up to a maximum capacity of 400 from 4 p.m. onwards. And the third is to allow them to keep their rear shutter doors open um, before and after they set the events up. So that's the application that's gone in. Comments have to be made by the 24th of August and go to the go to the Vale Council's planning department and the planning application number that I've got here is 2020 slash 00817 slash F 
UL. So that's the planning application that should have explained what it involves. So if I move on to Tracy's question then, and I can see Tracy has um, signed in and is watching live. So evening, Tracy, thank you so much for your question tonight and questions on previous shows as well. Tracy has looked through the application on the council's planning portal and she's read a lot of the supporting documents that have been provided by the applicants and she's noticed a slight error on there in that the applicants have claimed in their application that there are there haven't been any any concerns or complaints raised about noise coming from Vale Sports Arena in the past from local residents. I forwarded this on to the council's planning department in advance of tonight to see if I could get an answer. Fortunately, they came back to me in advance and I have forwarded the full response to Tracy so that she's got side of that. Basically, they've said they're aware of this. They know that complaints have been made in the past. They have drawn this to the applicant's attention and they will be monitoring this moving forward to make sure that the correct impression of what um, has happened down there is is made. So that's the that's the state of play on that one. One thing I would also point out on this, um, a couple of, or quite a few residents have got in touch with concerns about increasing the capacity on the site, um, concerns about noise, concerns about parking and other things as well. I just want to put on the record that I, and indeed most residents, obviously I can't speak for them, but I would imagine this is the case, don't have anything against Vale Sports Arena personally. I from a personal perspective, would love to see a successful business operating in Landoc. I think that it's good for our local economy. I think they create up to 70 jobs, may maybe many more actually, with, with temporary work and things like that on an event-by-event -event basis. But obviously, it's also my um, role as your local representative to take on board any concerns that residents have any issues that you have and make representations on your behalf and try and get them resolved. So there have been a few complaints about noise from Bale Sports Arena and it's important that we get those sorted out because quite frankly if we're going to have a successful business in Landoc we've got to make sure that residents don't suffer the adverse impacts of it. That's the balance that's got to be struck and I think that that is that is vitally important. And as Tracy has just said, it's just the noise until early hours. Well, obviously, we can't be in a residential area having having to put up with noise at that at that time and at that frequency. Most people are reasonable, and if it's a, if things happen as a one-off or something like that, people accept it. But if it keeps happening, it's got to be addressed. So I'm not making any allegations here or anything like that, but it's clear that. There are concerns from residents on this and action is going to need to be taken. Maybe that's planning who need to perhaps impose some conditions on the on the site, get better noise proofing in place and other measures as well, because the desired outcome is obviously to have a successful, thriving business. It's been a torrid few months for businesses, especially people in the entertainment industry. I get that. I respect that. I want to help. But I've also got to make sure that residents have their voice heard on this as well. And that if there are problems, as have been reported, that these are sorted out as well. So that's the that's the state of play. And just to put you in the picture of how else you can get involved with this, if you have any further questions, I'm happy to have a dialogue with you and with planning. I can I'm not a planning expert myself, so I just come at this from a sort of layperson's man on the street type type view. If there are technical questions you have, I will have to get the planning officers to answer those because that's their day job. They're professionally qualified in this and they know exactly what they're talking about, or at least they should know exactly what they're talking about. Um, if your concerns um, relate to relate to noise or or they relate to traffic or other things, 
do let me know. One other thing I will point out as well, um, the owners of Vail Sports Arena have spoken to, have approached me about this, and they have offered to meet any resident who would like to discuss their concerns with them. I think it's important to put that on the table and say, and say yes, that, that that offer has been made. Um, obviously, anyone who's contacted me about this privately, I will never pass your details on to any third party without your without your consent. I'm not pressuring anyone to take them up on that. It's your decision. But I just wanted to place on record that that offer has been extended. And if you would like me to try and facilitate that meeting, I'm more than happy to. So please do get in touch with me and I will put you in touch with Vail Sports Arena. But as I've said, if you've contacted me about this already, please don't worry. I will not pass anybody's details on without their prior consent. If you don't want me to, obviously I won't. And it would be completely wrong of me to do anything else. So hopefully that explains exactly what this application involves and gives you a broad update on the current state of play. So any comments need to be submitted by August the 24th. They go to the Council's Planning Department. I don't have the full address off the back of my mind, but I have put a Facebook post up already about this. You can click on the link to get um, full access to the Council's planning portal. So all the documents and instructions on how you can submit comments can be made through there. Or alternatively, drop me an email at george.carroll at valeconservatives.org.uk and I will pass those on as well. So that's the, that's the, that's the latest on that one. Um, if we move on then to the second topic um, of discussion, which is one that is music to my ears, I've got to be honest, the parking issues in Landock have been the number one priority for me, or getting them sorted, I should say, has been the number one priority for me, not just since I've been your councillor, but since when I first stood to be your councillor as well. It's been, it's felt at times like banging my head against a brick wall, but I will continue to do that to try and get action on this. And I'm pleased to announce that the Vale Council have brought forward a draft proposal for residents only parking zones. Now, it's a policy document, if you like. So it's not about saying this is going to happen anytime soon. So it is very much at an early stage. But if you don't know the background on this, the Vale Council currently don't allow any new residents only parking zones to be created anywhere in the Vale of Glamorgan. There are a few in Landock at the moment, a few elsewhere across the Vale as well. But believe it or not, they actually predate the Vale Council. They go back to when it was the old South Glamorgan County Council and they've just remained in place since then. So they're actually coming up for 25 years old. And in that 25 year period, um, a quarter of a century, no new ones have been created. Well, hopefully that's about to change because under this draft document, they will allow for new residents only parking zones to be created if this document obviously becomes policy and the conditions in the document are met. Now, things like this do have to be properly thought through. We can't do it on a whim. It has to be properly thought out. There have to be plans in place. We have to think about potential consequences as well. So it will take some time to bring things forward on this because it's important that when we do, we get them right. However, the draft proposals and the conditions in them would require a full consultation with local residents before any draft scheme is brought forward and following that it would then require the support of a clear majority of residents so that would be greater than the 50 percent of residents before any scheme would be brought forward in a particular area so those are the thresholds that need to be met obviously if residents don't want residents only parking schemes in their area they won't happen because we're creating these to benefit residents, not anyone else. So if you don't think it's going to be beneficial, you don't want them, they will not happen under this scheme. But it is very much policy wise that the change has to be made first. Once that policy is changed, we can then look at particular problem 
areas. If you have read the document or the report, I know one or two residents have, but most people, frankly, have got better things to do with their time than the council report, so I'm not expecting any of you, or many of you, I should say, to have read them. But if you haven't read them, there is reference to a scheme for Doc Dewey Road in the, in the report, and this scheme is going to be drawn up as a draft scheme that can then be put to consultation. So, to reassure you, Lamdoc is very much in their mind when they bring this report forward, uh, when they brought this report forward. So, it will be, uh, the draft scheme for Dr. Wigo will be coming forward. I had a meeting with the Highways Department earlier today. My first question on this was probably um, one that most people would expect. It's good that you're looking at Dock Dewey Road, but Landock has many areas of that are problems in terms of parking, whether it's from hospital staff or, or other, other, other issues. And so it's important that they get due attention as well. First of all, they confirmed to me this, this lunchtime, the meeting was just after 12 o'clock, they confirmed to me that when they say Dock Dewey Road in the report, they actually mean the entire estate. So it doesn't mean they're just going to make the estate blanket residence only. That's not what they mean at all before anyone gets, gets concerned about that. But what it does mean is they will be doing a full analysis of the estate, of problem areas for parking, and they will then bring forward proposals. So I know that Pantakellin Road is a problem area on the estate. I know that um, Bayview Crescent is as well and there are there are separate issues on that those areas will all be considered as part of the the proposal for Dr. Wigo so they will be looking at all of that I did mention Spencer Drive I mentioned sections of Penland Road I mentioned Lewis Road and I mentioned Coven Pill Road which one resident got in touch with me about as well they will look at those as well they can't do everything at once so you, you, no, nothing's been excluded from this. They are going to look at those as well, but the the initial scheme, it is going to be at the top of the agenda, is for Dr. We Road, and I, or the Dr. We Road estate, I should say, and I will make sure that I keep pressing on this, because Landock has been waiting far too long for action to deal with the parking problems. We are in a unique situation in Landock. There's nowhere else in the Vale of Glamorgan that has has a hospital like that in a residential area of a hospital that size. There's nowhere else that has that volume of people coming into what is, in effect, an otherwise quiet village on a daily basis. And so, and so action does need to be taken to address that. This is a step in the right direction, but there is plenty more that needs to be done. I have had people get in touch to express concerns about displacement parking. If we put residents only zones in certain areas, will that then just push the traffic, push the parked cars elsewhere? That is something that needs to be to be borne in mind when proposals are brought forward. So it's reasonable for people living on Dock Dewey Road to think, well, if we or one of the off streets or cul-de-sacs, well, if they stop it on Dock Dewey Road, are they going to come into my cul-de-sac? That's something that will need to be looked at. So perhaps they will propose residence-only schemes for the cul-de-sacs as well. Visitor permits will be provided so that, um, under the draft scheme at least, so that visitors can park. It is about stopping regular day-to-day -day use of residential areas as a car park. That's not what they're designed for, and it's important that that is addressed. I mean, one solution or potential solution that a resident raised with me, if it is hospital staff by and large parking in residential areas that are contributing to this problem, perhaps say a timed scheme from six o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock in the morning, make it residents only then so that hospital staff, when they start, start their shift, can't park there because otherwise they would be in contravention and then it wouldn't necessarily impact upon other upon other residents or visitors throughout the day. That's something to be looked at as well. This is an early stage proposal and there is plenty more that needs to be done on this. So I'm not counting any chickens on this one. I will keep pushing on it. 
it has been like banging my head against a brick wall at times. We finally made a dent in that wall. Now let's bring the wall down and let's get this sorted out. I will continue to do so. If anyone has any questions on this, do get in touch. Let me know and I will take your concerns or questions on board and get answers for them. So that's the latest on that. If you saw my video earlier with the week um, that I put up, a lot of you got in touch following seeing that, so hopefully that did explain in sort of a minute or so this, this whole convoluted report that the council have brought forward. But if there are any other questions, do let me know on that. And I think it's a good time then to talk about the other issues I discussed with the highways department in my meeting at lunchtime. A couple of them were quick queries. One of them came in from a resident ahead of tonight's um, show. That was in relation to the proposed double yellow lines on the junctions of Doctory Road and Pantakellin Road. We all know that that is a problem area. People coming out of Pantakellin Road can't see or their visibility is severely reduced because of the park vehicles there. The highway code is quite clear on this. You are not allowed to park within it's either 10 or 15 metres of a junction, but you can't do it. And if the police come down there and, and find that you have done, you will get a ticket and you will be fined. Um, so don't do it anyway. Is the, it's the law on that. You can't. But people aren't aware of that. And just having double yellow lines painted there, even though it's an offence already, so it's not going to create any extra offence in that, in that in that sense i think it'll create a stronger deterrent anyone who drives or in fact people who don't drive as well most people who see double yellow lines will know you cannot park there you're not allowed to park there so just putting those on the junction will help they were agreed by the council some two two and a half years ago when i first um, requested them following a residence um request the council finally had them in the capital budget for that work to be carried out. Um, then coronavirus and COVID hit, and it's obviously put it, it's obviously meant that there's been a lot of upheaval. They've had to direct resources elsewhere. That is still on the agenda. I've had confirmation of that. I don't have a date, but I've requested an update. And when I have that, I will be making an update the usual channels or my usual channels which will be my Facebook page, my, my regular newsletter, my e-newsletter and on next door as well so, so do keep your eyes peeled for that. That update will be coming forward fairly shortly. Um, one other resident who get, called me up yesterday in relation to HGVs, heavy goods vehicles, lorries travelling through the village She's noticed a significant increase living on Penland Road in recent weeks of lorries carrying soil. I think it's what she I think was what she said they were carrying, traveling through the village, traveling fast. Um, she said they, they, they damaged the road surface outside of her house. Um, I raised this with highways. They're, they're limited as to what they can do on this. Basically, most of you will be aware that the road or the road bridge carrying the um, Leckwith Road over the River Dealey, um from the just past the retail park up before Leckwith between the two. That's got a weight restriction on it. So HGVs can't use that route as it is. And I think that actually in the main prevents or stops HGVs travelling through Landoff because at uh, that end, at the at the, at the Leckwith end of the of that road, and at the Mary Harrier Junction as well, the signage is perfectly clear to say you cannot um, drive these vehicles through that road because of the weight restriction. The issue you've got is that any one taking a HGV either to somewhere in Landock or to Leckwith, I know that there's a haulage firm, Glen Harry Haulage, up there. Other than going through Dinas Powers potentially, but depending on where they come from, that would impact on it. There is only that route through, so they're not going to be able to put some restrictions in place. What I would say on this, if you notice any particular vehicle that's driving dangerously through the village, perhaps not taking care, not, um, not bearing in mind the fact that this is a residential area, do take down their details. If it's the if it's the, the haulage firm, if they're... they're 
their logo is on the side of the, the vehicle, if it's their registration number, do take them down because we can always just ask them politely, can you remind your drivers that this is a residential area and if you are if you have no option but to use this route because this is the only access that you've got can you please be mindful of local residents and i think that's the that's the way to to deal with this one so if you have further questions on that do get in touch if there are further concerns get in touch with me as well on that it's it depends exactly where they're going, where they're coming from. Perhaps they could be rerouted. I think that might be doubtful, but either way, um, they must be driving safely through the village, observing speed limits. And if they're not, then obviously we need to take that forward. And talking of speed limits, that was the other major topic of discussion in my meeting earlier with highways. That was basically in relation to the 20 mile an hour zones. I want them made permanent in Landock. The signage has been left up, but for those of you who aren't aware of it, it was a temporary experimental traffic order there. That has now expired, and so it's not actually legally a 20 mile an hour speed limit in Landock. It is 30. The following discussions with me, highways came to a compromise that they would leave the signage up. People who see a 20 sign, um, more often than not, will, will at least travel slower than they would if it wasn't there. The issue, though, comes to enforcement. Those zones can't be enforced if they're not legally 20 mile an hour zones. So I have been pushing the council on this to make them permanent. Now, this issue does divide opinion, and I accept that. Some people want them to be 20 mile an hour, some people want them to go back up to 30. My personal view on this, and this is a balanced view, I do see the pros and cons of this. I think it's better to have people traveling at 20 in a, at, at 30 in a 20 must get that right, 30 and a 20, than it is to have people travelling 40 and a 30, which is why I support, on balance, the 20 mile an hour scheme. We haven't got that made permanent at the moment, so it does cause us problems. When we had the Leckwith Road issues um, with speeding there, separate issue, I, I accept. I did request for the mobile camera to go there. The police turned it down because they said it wasn't a suitable location. But they also advised me that we can't bring the mobile van anywhere in Landock that's got those 20 zones in place because they are not legally enforceable, which is fair enough in that sense, because if people, you can't catch someone at 30 when the site, at 20, when, just because the signage says so, when in actual fact the speed limit isn't 20, it's 30. So that, they can't put, take enforcement measures in that area while that limit is in place unfortunately but what I would say on that I am pushing for them to make it 20 permanently they aren't as keen on that as I am unfortunately it is going to take some pushing but we have seen with the parking that if you keep nagging if you keep up the pressure on issues if you don't give up if you are relentless that's how you get results on this. So I don't make any apologies for banging on about things. I think that's the way that you drive things up the agenda. I think it's the way that you get people to take our community and our issues seriously. So I will keep doing that. But it does mean that I'm going to have to keep doing that because they're not that keen at the moment on 20 zones. I, I, I agree with them to an extent in that I don't think you should just blanket the whole veil as 20 miles per hour. I think that it does have to be targeted, but I do think that Landock is one such area where 20 mile an hour zones would be beneficial and should be implemented. So that's the latest on that one. Um, Catherine Miller just commented as well. Evening, Catherine. Um, thanks for joining us. The buses as well. That's um, that's another issue. I think, yes, buses should be should be should be careful, especially considering they're carrying passengers as well. I think that's more so. Um, I can get onto the bus companies about that. There's obviously Cardiff Bus and New Adventure Travel, who are two um, bus companies operating in Landock, asking them to remind their drivers of that. And that is one to bear in mind. Um, if we move on to the other issues to discuss as well then, 
One thing I would point out, the bin at Spencer Drive. Thank you to everyone who um, submitted your votes on that. Um, various options were provided. Um, these were all suggestions from local residents. It's been notoriously difficult to find or agree a consensus on this one, unfortunately. Um, so we're not going to be able to keep everyone happy. But there was a clear majority on this one in favour of resident of of the bin being kept where it is at the current site by the bus stop on the institute side of Henland Road and then to request another bin but put it further into the green from where from where residential properties are. Obviously some people didn't like that idea because they didn't want the um they either thought that People might not see it if it wasn't right on the corner. Other people thought the children play on the green as well. I get those concerns, but I do think we're going to have to go with the majority on this one, which is why I will be putting that request in. It will be dependent on stocks, though. I do have to have to make that point. If they don't have sufficient spare stock, I would imagine they do. But if they don't, I will have to get I will have to come back for another proposal, but hopefully that will be the optimum solution on that one. And talking of bins, I had a request from a resident um, ahead of this broadcast this evening about the bin by the school. Um, we obviously replaced one bin on Dr. Wee Road with a bin with side flags to stop the fox getting in, or at least we thought it might have been the fox. It seems to have caused a problem on the bin by the school. That now is going to be replaced with one with side flags as well. So they, they're stocked on those that are limited as well. But hopefully that will at least help with that problem. They are an issue, these, um, these litter bins. I think that you do need to provide them because it's not an excuse to drop litter if there's no bin. I, I, think, I, I think that if anyone's caught dropping litter, they should face the consequences. If you have litter and there's no bin, you carry it with you, or you jolly well carry it with you, until you find a bin. But sometimes it's, sometimes it's, we know that it will make it less likely that people will drop litter if there is a bin nearby. So that's why I have requested, requested bins. Understandable that people don't want them outside their houses. It's important they're emptied regularly. I know there was an issue last week or the week before with the bins being emptied and then the contents not being collected. I've raised that with, with waste management and they are going to check their records to make sure that we keep on top of that. Um, a couple of other questions that have come in one from Dean Mears, Community Councillor Dean Mears. Thanks for this, Dean. Dean, for those of you who don't know, um, his background is actually in transport planning, so he's got far more um, expertise on this than I do. So Dean is definitely someone to speak to about this. Um, could you request speed automatic traffic counters on the pen on Penland Road to establish the 85th percentile speed? Yes, Dean, I can do that. I had that done last week on... Leckwith Road. Unfortunately, the results came back, didn't show that many people speeding, which was frustrating because I see it myself, vehicles going through there far faster than the, um, the 30 mile an hour limit there. I will, I will request that for Penland Road as well. If there is a particular location of Penland Road that you've got in mind, do let me know and I will I'll put that request in, but I think that it just just a general one may be may be helpful there. Another question as well from Bryn Adams. Evening Bryn. Um hi George, who's responsible for cutting back the path over to Mickleston? Love walking the dog over there, but it's getting tricky. Um I will have to check that one on you, Dean. I'm not entirely sure at the back of my mind whether it's an adopted um footway or not. I will put a request into the council on that. Um, if it's there, if it's if it's adopted by the council, it's their responsibility. If not, it'll be the landowner. But I will I will get onto that. Um, with some of the other updates I've got, then the final one really is the multi-use games facility that um, that is now complete. Um, this is a community council project or a landlord community council project. They've led on this one, so the credit should go to them for, for all the work that's been, been done on it. They 
provided the bulk of the monies on it. There was about £20,000 Section 106 monies that went in, but other than that, they um, either used their own reserves or they fundraised um, or they applied for various grants that I, I put that I, I suggested to them, and that, that came in as well. But they have really pushed on this for a long time, and I think this is going to be a huge asset to Landock. It, you can play football on there, basketball, do other things there. It really is going to make a difference for young people in the community. We often say that we need to provide facilities for young people to get active, to get out and about, and this is one such scheme. So thank you to everyone on the Community Council for your work delivering that. Thank you to Councillor Ian Williams in particular, because I know when I suggested one of the grant schemes to you, I wasn't necessarily sure that it would that it would come to anything, but Ian went away, filled out all the paperwork, um, very time consuming, and it I think it provided around twenty thousand, although that figure could be wrong, but it was it was a it was a significant sum and it was certainly going above and beyond. But that facility, if it's not open already, it should be open fairly shortly. It's gonna make a big difference. I have had a request from the community council on this one and I'm happy to support this. They'd like some fencing around the wider area to stop um, with the other play equipment that's there to stop children, to stop dogs getting in there. Dog fouling is a problem. I am more than happy to support this. I completely agree that we should be fencing play areas off. I know the council, when I've requested it before, have cited lack of funds, but I will keep pushing. I have put the question in already. I have put the question in already. It's um, it's. It's going to make a, it's, it's something I've said needs to be done. I've asked the council to do it. I haven't had a response yet, but I will, I will push on this. And thank you to Linos Mizra, Councillor Mo Mizra's, um, Mizra's wife there for um, confirming that it is open. So that's a quick turnaround because I had the confirmation from the council that it had been handed over. It was either yesterday or the day before. Fantastic that it's open for you. So please do make use of it and thank you once again to Landock Community Council for the hard work in making it and Dean another community councillor kids playing in the mugger today that is brilliant that is exactly what we want to see especially after the last few months of not being able to use play equipment anywhere for um, obvious reasons we can use the existing equipment now and the mugger is open for use as well so that is a great Bit of news for Landock, a great thing to end on. If you've got any other questions that you want to raise with me, any other issues that I can help with, please do get in touch. You can either email me at george.carroll at valeconservatives.org.uk or you can give me a call. My number is 07 889 So thank you to everyone for joining me this evening. As I've said, now that we've gone, we, we're closer, we're not, not back to normality by any stretch, but we certainly have more normality than we did when I first started doing Landock Live. I will host the next one soon, but there will be a break in between because otherwise people will get bored and fed up with these. Anything I can help with in the meantime, do get in touch. We can meet in person now if it's socially distanced, or I'm happy to do virtual meetings as well, or give me a ring. Anything I can help with, let me know. Other than that, have a good evening. I think we're probably expecting some um, thunderstorms or more thunderstorms over the next couple of days. We've had great weather. Um, one final question before we go from Dean. Again, we need a bin between the Lewis Road and Scout Hall entry points. We may have an issue here, Dean, because um, I will have to double check. I think that might be um, not council land, in which case they won't put it on there. I have asked for bins in other areas of, of, of Lewis Road slash um, the playing fields before to try and stop this. If it is council land, I will request it. If it's not, they, they won't entertain that idea. I have asked them for other 
of the beans in other locations that are not council land and they've said no on the grounds that there wouldn't be anyone to empty them. It's frustrating, but unfortunately, that's the way it is. And just one final thing as well. Um, anyone who's received A-level results today in Landoc, um, congratulations. Hopefully you, they're the results you were hoping for. If they're not, don't worry, because obviously it's it's not the it's not the end of the world but just wanted to say well done it's been much i can't think of a any time like this to be doing not exams but to be preparing the uncertainty all the rest of it so just wanted to shout out to anyone who may have had their results today um other than that i will see you very soon anything i can help with do let me know and thank you for joining me this evening goodbye